I made it my goal that in May I was going to do what most people told me was unthinkable, that was impossible, that would never be accomplished by anybody, specifically me, that I was going to walk on, I was going to try out for a U-Sport team, specifically University of Manitoba Bisons. I was going to be able to walk on, I was going to try out, and I was going to make the team and win that third string goaltending position and develop into a role there. That was my goal and I came up short. I just didn't get the job done. I wasn't able to close the deal and accomplish the goal that set out to do. It sucks. A lot. Picks it up the loose puck, comes over the middle. Has a shot, oh, and it's a nice save by Richton. Looks like Gilderson the shot. Blocker save and control the rebound by Richton. Gilderson going in on one with a shot. He scores with a beauty little shot. That beat Richton on the first. You know, being at VIU last season, I felt from the start, like I couldn't do anything right. I felt like I couldn't get any breaks to go my way. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do anything right, it felt like. You know, the hard part is it's super discouraging trying to be successful in hockey when you're putting in the time and you're putting in and you feel like you're doing all the right things but you're not seeing the results you know and my dad's always tried to instill in me that you know when things aren't going your way you're probably not doing something right and I've always been trying to uh, you know try to embrace that mentality but it's it's absolutely tough it's it's super difficult and that feeling of uh, it almost felt like hopeless to be in the program the entire time it motivated me and inspired me to want to try to accomplish something better so when I told the team I wasn't coming back in, in April or March or whatever the time of the year it was, and I said, hey, I'm going to go all in on this Bison tryout. I'm going to go all in on trying to make U-Sport. Like, that was my, my turning point in the road where, like, we're going all in. All the eggs are in the basket. I want to accomplish this goal. Now, I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to blame the coaching staff for, for making a wrong decision. Do I agree with their decision? No. Who's going to agree with the decision of a coach's decision to cut them? Probably 95% of people are going to say they don't agree with it. So what I am going to do is going to get back to work. And not working a nine to five job, I'm talking, we're getting back in the gym three to four days a week, getting better, back on the ice, sharpen up the skill set, sharpen up my game. And because I have a backup plan, I'm gonna put all this into place. When I went down to Alabama in July for that pro camp, one of the general managers from an FHL team was also there. And he offered me a contract to sign with the brand new expansion team, the Columbus River Dragons in the FHL. I signed the contract, that was my plan. First off, they've been fantastic with being open-minded, communicating with me, and allowing me to pursue collegiate level hockey first before I commit to the pro level game. But I'm gonna be the backup for the team this year, at least from what I've been told. There's gonna be a lot of work ahead of me. I'm gonna be striving to get better every day. And I'm looking at least a two year plan of playing pro hockey there in Columbus. Who knows what happened to the collegiate level game, but that is my plan. It is time to get back to work. It is time to get better and stop the slide and get back onto a team and start playing some goddamn hockey because this game is freaking fun. I got a workout in about 15 minutes I'm gonna head to and I'm gonna bring you inside that process. We're gonna finish things up with the Q&A afterwards talking about hockey related advice. We live in a world full of excuses and I will not make excuses for my shortcomings. What I will do is put the nose to the grindstone and work a little bit harder to accomplish those goals. That is the only thing worth doing in this lifetime. Obviously today's video is a little bit about uh, going through some hard times, experiencing some trials and tribulations in the game of sport. That said, I'd like to do a little bit of a Q&A, answering some of your questions, talking about, well, exactly that, hockey advice, going through hard times. We got a Q&A intro now. Check this out. I did, did this up myself.
Christian Anderson underscore 38 ask, how do you not take hate when you are a young backup goalie on a senior team? I'm assuming how do you not have hatred for the team because you're the backup goalie? Because uh, I found that was a very common denominator in a lot of my hockey in earlier days. I think it comes down to understanding one thing, and that is that you have to put in your time and anything in life. You don't just, boom, I got a million bucks, I'm starting goalie in the National Hockey League. It doesn't work like that. Everybody has to pay their dues. Everybody has to put in the time to get to the level they want to be. This is also coming from somebody who has never been a starter, well, aside from Junior B, never been a starter, so take it for what it is. Next question comes from Robin.esv30. What is the best way to deal with coaches that ignore you and bench you without changing teams? This has come a lot more full circle in my career now that collegiate hockey has been on the front center, on the front burner. Uh, because with college hockey, once the season starts, once the college year starts, the semester starts, you can't change teams. You're stuck there. So I think the biggest thing that I learned being at VIU, and I wish I would have done it when I was there as opposed to now that I get to look back on it and reflect on it, is that you have to understand you're stuck on the situation. You're not leaving. Things are not going to get better on their own, and things are not going to get better just because you're pissed off and you're upset and you want to do some bitching and moaning and complaining. Things are going to get better if you do something about the situation. So coming to the rink with a good attitude, coming to the rink open-minded, you just want to work. Just shut up and work. I love this question. This is a fantastic one. Connor Bombatch31, have you ever been cut and what did you do about it? I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I think the coaching staff made a mistake letting me go. Uh, that's just my personal two cents. Am I gonna yell at the coach? No, am I gonna scream at him? No, am I gonna tell him you don't know what the hell you're talking about? You don't understand the game? No, whether I believe it or not, it does not matter. What matters is that me doing that ain't gonna change anything. He ain't gonna change his mind. He ain't gonna change his decision. Let's move on, let's take that negative, let's turn it into a positive, let's try to find other opportunities with other teams, and let's keep on going. Right now, I got cut, sucks, what am I gonna do? We're gonna move forward. Columbus, Georgia, the FHL, the Columbus River Dragons is what I'm focused on now, having the best possible season I can there. There's nothing else to focus on, there's nothing else to save that energy and that passion for. Sea Shrimp one asks, how do you feel about pay-to-play leagues, uh, junior A leagues like the WSHL, the GMHL, or the MMJHL in Manitoba? I don't know how to feel, to be honest with you. I know the Winnipeg Blues in Winnipeg for the MJHL are charging $12,000 a season to play junior A. The more you charge when it comes to junior hockey, it becomes more of a who has the richest parents and who has the most money in their pocket, not who's been working their ass off all summer, who is ready to play junior A and to make the jump coming in mind from somebody who only played 15 minutes or 12 minutes of Junior A, so I don't know how much that means to you. Matty Da Wally asked, do you have any pet peeves when it comes to on ice officials? Holy f do I like this question. No, I don't have any single, not one single pet peeve about officials. It is out of my control. If you haven't seen my video already talking with John Stevenson, the sports psychologist, about how Braden Holtby's game has changed to become basically mentally indestructible, I highly recommend you look at it. Point being, I control what I have control over. I don't have control over the officials. I don't control have control over a lot of things in the sporting world and in my own success, such as coaches, opportunities, injuries, other guys' performances, the opposing team. I don't control any of that stuff. If a ref makes a bad call, I literally don't care. I'll ask him how his day is going before the game starts or before, you know, whatever, to try to be friendly, because I'm generally speaking, I try to be a friendly guy. But aside from that, I don't care about the refs at all. Playing low tier junior hockey worth it or should I focus on going to college? Now, this is coming, well, this answer is going to be coming from somebody who has thrown their entire life on hold, given up a lot in life, uh, relationships, family, jobs, you name it to try to chase the dream and also make YouTube videos while chasing the dream. I can go to school when I'm 40. I can go to school any time in my life. Hockey only happens once. Once you quit the game, once you take a break, once you stop playing, it is almost impossible to regroup, to gain opportunities. Also, it's fun. Why would you not want to have fun? I love playing this game. I want to play this game as long as I possibly can because it's a damn good time. I love hockey. There's your answer. Great question, Belzy.1. How do you balance having fun with hockey while playing competitively and working hard? I just have fun at everything I do. Everything I do, I try to enjoy. There's no sense going through life handing it. There's no sense going through a workout and being like, oh, this sucks. When are we going to be done? Opportunity to get better. There's no sense going through an ice time thinking the same thing. The other day, one of the guys uh, on the U Sport team was actually giving me a hard time asking me, why do you go out on the ice early? Because we have ice times that are set up for around 8.30 in the morning. I usually go out for 8.10. I love working hard. I like bettering my skill sets. I like working on my edges. I like practicing stuff. I like getting better. That's my purpose in life, I feel, is to get better in hockey. So you can't always just be work, 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 nose to the grandstone. You gotta have ways to have fun with the game. Final question today comes from James Newfeld on Twitter, and he asks, what are some ways do you keep yourself focused in a game or during a stretch of a game where there isn't much going on your end? And also, how do you stay calm when a three ring circus is in front of you? Mental focus, mental preparation, working in the mind, my friend. When things aren't happening, it's very easy to lose track of focus. Think of what I'm gonna have for lunch or what I'm having for dinner, girls I've been talking to. There's a lot of things that go on in the mind. 
maintaining that focus, snap back, boom, back into the game. We're thinking about the game. When the plays at the other end, I try to use it as an opportunity to focus in the game again and think, okay, if I was a goalie at the other end, I may not be getting that action, but what I would like to think is how would I handle that, right? Passes being made from a left-handed shot to a right-handed shot or whatever the case may be, I'm thinking what would I do to apply myself in that situation? So the focus is staying sharp, the focus is on. Hope that answers your question. That is the end of the Q&A. If you have a question you want me to answer, leave them in the comment section below if you want them answered and they may appear in the next video. So I've been doing a lot of research lately. Sidelineswap.com is in fact the greatest website in the world. The logic behind that is that they have great deals on pro return new and used sporting equipment. My favorite feature of sidelineswap.com is that if you don't know what to sell your gear for, let's say I wanna sell some Reebok Premier 2 pads from 2006 and the 2007 era, I put that into the computer, it'll tell me, hey, this is what you should be selling them for if you wanna get a quick sale, if you wanna hold it out a little bit longer, you could also sell these for, here's the average price of what stuff sells for. Go to sidelineswap.com, I endorse the website because it's an awesome place to buy and sell. Pro return new and new sport equipment, highly recommended, and I will see you in the next video.